Apple hitting another record high today. The stock has now gained more than 80% this year, its best yearly performance in a decade. But widely followed analyst Gene Munster at Loop Ventures thinks shares can gain about another 20% in the next year. Munster naming Apple his top fang pick for 2020. Now, Jim, <laughs> this is just the latest. I'm going to quickly run through. December 23rd, Wedbush increased Apple to 325. <clears throat> Credit Suisse made positive comments. December 11th, Apple's target increased to 275 at Evercore. Apple's target increased to 300 at Citigroup on December 5th. The analyst community is just literally tripping over itself to either raise their rating, their price target, or both. Yeah, I, look, we're, we're except in, with the exception of Rosenblatt, which reiterated a sell and a hundred and fifty dollar target. So thanks for the comic relief there. Uh, look, I, I think we're entering silly season <laughs> on uh, on Apple right now. Gene Munster is a fabulous analyst. I'm not taking a shot at him, but the analyst community right now is it's kind of like this scene from Something About Mary. You remember that movie, uh, uh, Brian? Something About There's Mary. There's a few scenes in there. I remember. I'm not going right, to go so into all. This is the director of that one. <laughs> hang Peter on, hang on, hang on one second, Josh. So there's a scene where a guy comes in. I got a great business. Hey, Plan. You've heard of eight-minute abs? I'm going to come up with seven-minute abs. And, and Ben Stiller says, well, what about the next guy comes up with six-minute abs? You know, that's where we're going here. It's just falling all over each other until you finally see a top in Apple. If there's one stock, look, the company is fabulous, but if there's one stock that has borrowed 2020's gains into 2019, it's Apple. It probably has a lot to do with the uh, absence of tax gain selling. So I do think you'll see this come down in January. 350, 400, yeah, it'll reach those targets, but not in January, maybe January of 2021. So you're long-term bullish. Yeah, but, but in, in the, the near short term, term you're a little short, worried. As much as I hate making short-term calls, this one just seems so obvious that we've borrowed 2020s gains you know, into 2019. I think it was Jeff Gunlock a few years ago that at the time made an interesting comment. Obviously, it didn't work out now, but he said, why would Apple go up when, I think it was Gunlock, when everybody already owns it? Right. And if everybody, if all the hedge, if you look on Apple, it's the top holding in almost every hedge fund, mm -hmm. every pension fund, every mutual Who's left to buy it? Yeah. So that's the point that I was going to make, that it is widely owned. It's a $1.3 trillion company. We happen to be overweighted, but that means we have close to 5%. Do we really want more Apple? I don't think so. And I worry that it's almost sacrilegious to say anything against Apple today. But no one liked Apple 12 months ago. The stock was... I know, did. Well, yes. You know, some people, <laughs> no. but, but the tone was Just really kidding. negative about Apple and the trade wars and how things were sort of going to collapse for them overseas. But then Tim Cook, so more than any CEO, masterfully and deftly God dealt with the White with House. Donald Trump. Yeah. So that's, you know, great. Is that going to happen again? We're up 80% from a year ago. And I think that there's an important chart I hope you can pull up, which is the S&P growth versus value index. Okay. So people have been talking all year, or certainly the last six months, about how value is outperforming growth. Value is outperforming growth. It was up 32.5% so far this year versus 31 for growth. And in the last four months of the year, it's up about 10% more if you look at the chart. There it is. So look that's that. the look year. How good the team. Shout out to the halftime team. I don't think they're going to call for that. Great job. And they threw, they drew and that the by next. hand in the last 20 <laughs> exactly. seconds. And if you go down, we're going to see the last four months. And you wonder, why is it that value, which is the orange, should be so far ahead of growth? Well, it's because Apple has been in value. It represents almost 10%. Oh, a big of part of that value. also has got to be utilities. No, it, no, not really. It's the Apple. Utility is a the, sword. Yeah, but the top, the top names in the index are Apple, which is the biggest, up five point. Uh, it represents 5.2 percent. It is more than Citi, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Walmart, Costco, P&G, and Cost, and another company Excellent. combined, oh. combined in, in the top of, wow. of that index. So it's Apple and chip stocks that have really had these dramatic moves. Now Apple has moved into growth. It's no longer in value. It's moved to growth. If you go down one more, Do you think there's see. a little portfolio yeah. shifting going on by well, fund managers that say, I've got to be this percentage growth, that percentage value. Suddenly it, the biggest stock sort of moves up. It moved. All so of a sudden it, everybody has to buy or indexes or maybe have to adjust. Sell. I mean, I think that the move that Apple had this year, 80% has been so dramatic. It's really hard to shift positioning that fast if you're a portfolio manager yeah. on the other side of the trade. And I just worry that, uh, again, it's, it's owned. It's widely owned. Too owned. No? Maybe. Well, the analysts hard, have hard, to make, hard, hard to get it going another 80%, that's for sure. Last word that I'll throw out there, Brian, is that with 5G coming, I've talked about it with Consumer Electronics Show and 
the focus, and of course Apple is not at Consumer Electronics Show because they don't need to be. They do their own shows. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, 5G, that's why everybody, if they are getting ahead of themselves, that's why they're getting ahead. Because when that comes out in September, that is lights out for Apple. Totally lights out. You've really been on the CES trade, John. I mean, every day Ooh, you're like, yeah, oh, I'm trying to get I mean, CNBC to pay for my trip to Vegas. <laughs> That's really because you need help. <laughs> right on. That's right. Every time I look on your Instagram, you're in Zermatt or, you know, Buenos Aires the- or wherever <laughs> you go. Know, eh?